now that you've done a reread, you've done some chapter breakdowns, you've gone over your character arc, let's pick up an even more fine tooth comb. You have seen and read your story up and down at this point. You should have gotten some feedback from betas and CPs by now. So let's start breaking down your story scene by scene. How you do this is once again up to you. I like to use plot boards, be it a cork board with index cards or poster board with sticky notes on it, a science board breaking up the story into three acts, or sometimes just a notebook. Jotting down a summary sentence of each scene into bullet points, like a beat sheet. And of course, there are a million other ways that you can organize this on your computer, whether through Scrivener, a spreadsheet. The point is to have a bird's eye view of the entire story, which can be extremely helpful for any necessary revisions. At this point, your manuscript is looking beautiful. We're honing in and getting tighter and tighter with these edits. Guess what time it is. It's time for another read through, friends. And whether you've already done this before or not, this is a great time to read your novel out loud. Either you yourself reading your story out loud, or I've heard of a lot of authors, they actually use programs, whether on their iPads or on their computers, where the document has some type of setting where the computer or device will read your document to you. The point of this step is to actually hear all the little things that you probably missed while you were editing. When we're going over something we've written, our brains will automatically autocorrect any type of mistake, whether it's a confusing phrase or a misused word. When you read your work out loud, if you come across a sentence that caused you to stumble, that's usually a clear sign that it needs to be rewritten. Because if your tongue got a little tied trying to read it, most definitely the reader will. Also, when you read your work out loud, you'll notice areas where you have poor word choices. And my favorite, because it happens all the time, repetition. All the words that you suddenly realized, holy crap, in two sentences, I use the same word at least four times. And when you read it out loud, you cringe. So read your work out loud. At this point, you've done so much work to your novel in the editing phase. These are just kind of the final steps because you're trying to make it the best that it can be. Also at this stage, this is where you're doing some line to line edits. You're refining and cleaning everything up. This has been a labor of love. And now it's time for a new round of betas. Get the last set of fresh eyes to look over your novel so that you know if your audience is gonna be happy or not. So we're coming towards the end and your novel's looking pretty spiffy, but it's not over. When you're feeling pretty set and happy with how your story has come together, this is the time where you want to invest, ready? In a professional editing service. I already hear everyone going, wait, what? What did I do all that work for if I'm just gonna hire a professional to do it again? So here's the thing. If you're going the traditional publishing route, this may not be a step that you necessarily need to take. You're thinking you went in, you did the work, you made everything as clean as possible. So now you wanna enter the querying phase, you wanna find an agent, get a contract with a publishing house, they're gonna give you awesome editors to work with. That decision is up to you. When I completed my first official novel, The Young Adult Dystopian, I knew it was a mess. I had no idea also what I was doing back then. If I was going to query for that book to find an agent and a publishing house contract, it needed work. There's so much competition out there. There are so many manuscripts that are given to agents and publishing houses. I wanted my novel to have the best chance possible. And so I went and looked for a freelance editor to help clean it up so it was in better shape for when I did present it to a possible agent and publishing house. You've done the work to edit your novel as best as you can before pursuing traditional publishing. This is where it's up to you whether you just wanna present it as is or if you wanna invest in editing services because you feel like it could use some more work and give it its best chance. Now, if you're going the self-publishing route, then there's no if, ands, or buts about it. You need to invest in professional editing service. Even after all that work that you just did, 
it's not ready to go yet. Creative writing is fun. The business of publishing a book is a whole other ball game and it requires work. It's a career path. It's not just a hobby anymore. So if at the end of this video you're thinking, holy crap, that's a lot of work, especially if I'm just gonna end up paying someone to fix it up later. Here's the thing, you are going to be handing off your novel to a stranger, to a stranger who is not invested as you are, to a stranger who's only going to look at all of the little fine details and the formula necessary to present a marketable book. Taking the time to do some self-editing, as long of a process as it may seem, will benefit you in so many ways. And one of the main ways that it'll benefit you is that you will have a clear understanding at this point of your story, of what you wanted from your story, and how you want it to end. Because an editor is gonna come back at you with challenging questions and remarks. You'll also have understanding already of what an audience thinks of your story through the beta reading process. Don't sell your story short by trying to skip some steps to get to the publishing part faster. What's the point of publishing a book if you didn't try to make it as clean and as presentable as possible so that your readers can truly enjoy it? It's why many start, but very few finish and accomplish. So there it is folks, I hope this doesn't turn out to be a really long video, but I really enjoyed putting this together because not only for you guys, but even as a review for myself, they're key tips on how to approach your novel after a first draft. So for all of you NaNoWriMo writers who have your manuscripts there sitting and waiting to be made pretty, I hope this video will be helpful for you now or later when it comes time to taking those 50,000 words and making something of them. I'm sure there will definitely be more editing videos coming in the near future. Editing is such a vast subject that can be approached in so many different ways. This is just one way of looking at the editing process and how to start and approach it from beginning to end. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you enjoyed it and that you want more of it. If this is your first time here, hey, hi, how are you? Welcome to our channel. There's a subscribe button right over here. Click that button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Don't forget to check out our shop, coffeereadingwriting.com, and I'll see you guys again soon with more videos. Bye. Instagrammer Twigger, Twigger? Instagrammer Tigger? Damn it. Shouldn't have I, what?